Hi YouTube, it's Maggie Bot. I just wanted to do a quick casual video about my weekend gaming. Uh, I don't always have time to do as many polished reviews as I'd like, and at least I'd like to be able to share with you some of the things I'm getting from Kickstarter and from the big wide world. So let's dive in a little bit. And if you ever have any specific requests or anything, if I show you something and I never review it, please give me a heads up because I'm happy to fill requests. At least I know people are watching. Um, so the first one is MDO, uh, Eminent Domain Escalation. And this is really pretty little signature from Seth down here. Uh, this was an expansion that they kickstarted and is coming into stores really fast. I think it's out. I think I've got an invoice for it coming in today or tomorrow to my shop. I got about a week ago. And this is one of the few things I'll show you that I haven't actually played yet. Um, but this gives you a lot of cool new ways of fighting and some new warfare and survey stuff. Um, it's got a good amount of the basic fleet and turn action cards. And then about three or four card decks. And <laughs> okay, it's a shame. Mine aren't even open yet. They're still in plastic. So that will be changed very soon. Um, my friends have told me, though, that I had not played enough games with them because apparently I just played a couple games of M Eminent Domain with everyone, just two here, two here, two here. So none of my friends are really familiar with the game. So now I need to force them all to play more so I can play my expansion. Um, next up, I have the Ginkopolis expansion. And just so you guys know, I'm not the hugest expansion player. I'm more about complete whole games, and especially when you're into European-style board games, a lot of times it feels complete, because imagine tacking on something to Kalis to me, just it ruins my whole perspective of it. So really the only kinds of games I like expansions for are ones that use cards, or have some sort of manipulatable one thing. Uh, the exception to that are games that weren't necessarily complete until they had an expansion. My favorite example of this was Core Worlds, which was the space deck builder. But the expansion was so, so good that it should have just been part of the base. That um, I, would, I would never play it without that again. Uh, so back to back to Ginkgo. Uh, Ginkopolis was one of my favorite games last year. I told people that it's so different and so good at what it's trying to do, and you won't necessarily appreciate it till you know the game a little bit better. But this is a modular expansion. It had four different parts you could add in. There were experts that gave you an additional ability. There were green spaces that were extra victory points whenever you built next to them. There were these high point scoring cards, um, like a 24 or 25, that you had to take instead of a lot of tiles. And they guarantee you no one can build on top of them. They are fantastic. Uh, the green spaces were another thing we really liked, and I'm missing one of the one of the one of the mods. Um, I think the new the the new buildings were just some more victory point scoring ones. They were 21 through 23. Uh, they were fine, but the green spaces and the what are called prestige buildings, or really high point ones, were the ones that we really liked. They slowed down the game a little bit. They added some extra things, and they. They didn't hinder, and they also didn't help our our least favorite as a group strategy, where someone always starts spamming building out to try and speed up the game, because it's really effective, and you can usually win if no one's stopping you. But um, there's definitely some cool stuff in the box. The experts on our first playthrough, we haven't tried them again. They're crazy, man. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> they're just really powerful so you can't really not use them and so they get kind of distracting. Uh, here's the one that's gonna get it. This is the ire up from all my friends so far. Uh, so a study in emeralds. Uh, this is a Neil Gaiman inspired uh, deck builder-ish game from Martin Wallace. You can see it's very colorful for Martin here. Um, you have a number of things going on. There is a deck building element. You play cards, you start with some of them, you can earn cards over the course of the game. That being said, you don't 
build much deck. You can also control agents, cities which give you cards, crazy Cthulhu, um, you can have a Shagath. You can have whatever you want. There are hidden loyalties amongst you. You've got to try and figure out who is loyal to the old ones, who is on the revolutionary side. And by the end of the game, whoever's in the last place, so if Joe has one point and he's with the old ones, he's a loyalist, he, he makes that whole team lose, and the person on the team, the other team with the most points wins. I have not reconciled with myself how clunky the game is. It Everything just feels pasted on and battered around and you put a little thing on here and you put another thing over there and I, I have not found a sophisticated lovely game inside the game and I know for a fact that almost everyone else that's played it love love loves it. So I've got to give it a few more plays before I decide to get rid of it. Um, I also have to sleeve it. This is definitely one that needs to be sleeved. The cards are not built to hold up and you, you shuffle your, your little 10 card starter deck a lot because you're not building all the cards into it. Um, a very quick sneak peek at what I received yesterday in the mail. Uh, this is my Lagoon prototype. Lagoon is on Kickstarter now. Go back it if you haven't. Um, we just started the playtest last night, so we did two two full run-throughs, one two-player, one three-player. Um, this is a fantastic abstract. Uh, not abstract. Uh, it's a strategy game. It does have a lot of theme. Mr. David is very happy with his druids, and what's kind of cool is you're introducing tiles into this magical land, and there's three energies and kind of a rock, paper, scissors uh, circle. One one is stronger than the other, which is stronger than the other, which is stronger than the other one. So I loved what I played so far. Um, there's not too much information on the board because you introduce the pieces one at a time. If you are to look at the board five minutes in, you would just be overwhelmed and those things would be crazy, but it kind of spoon feeds it to you a little bit. I can see why they cut it off at three players though. With more than that, there is nothing you can do on other people's turns and so you're just waiting around to clean up the mess that they made, basically. I guess we'll probably try a partner's game here or there, but my review is really going to focus on a two or three player aspect. All right, last but not least, we have Gear and Piston. Um, this is a Ludicreations Kickstarter reward. Um, it I backed it so long ago <laughs> that I couldn't remember what it was about when it came in the mail. Um, I had to reread the whole thing. Uh, turns out that it is a hour or less worker placement game. Uh, you're turn of the century folks building a car and you're racing to build the finest automobile you can, but you're using pieces that you found around scrapyards, junkyards, and kind of patents that you tried to build, and some of them are volatile. Um, very fun, very light. I don't know that it's for me, my personal tastes, but it's something I can sell. And it's about to come into stores, so it's something that I can find for families that I know and that are looking for something that's over real fast and has a little strategy, but is still accessible to their kids. And anything with building is going to be a little more accessible to kids because they get to put the little things which ways. Um, so, good, not great. But we'll see um, if it gets better over time or with some variants to make it a little bit harder. It has one expansion in the box that's supposed to make it a little bit more con um, less less luck based. Uh, so that's my entire week in gaming. Uh, up next this week, I would like to take a look at Brimmerhaven. Uh, this is a Lahav lookalike from Lookout Games, and I saw the box and I was like. Why would they do this? It's got ships and it's got a dude on it and it's a white box with the same banner. It looks just like Lahav. So I'm very curious to see if that one holds up. Um, other than that, we didn't get much for games this month. There is a game called Infamy from Mercury Games that I'm very, very interested in. And we'll see if I can get a game of that one in. And maybe, finally, finally, I will get a game of The Great Fires of London, because it's 
been in my game collection for way too long without getting on the table. So when one of these days I will set fire to London and it will be good. And on that note, I say goodbye. Bye.